Whenever I watch a movie, I want it to feel something. Whether it's to make me laugh or even make me cry, I want it to mean something to me. This show is known to do that. You're lying April, or Shigatsu Wakimi no Uso, to all the weeaboos watching this video. It's possibly the most symbolic and thematic show I have ever watched. This video will be tailored more to those who have seen the show already. If you haven't seen the show yet, I would recommend you to immediately stop watching this video and go and watch it. But if not, um, that's okay too, I guess. Um, why are you watching this video? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thanks. Thanks for watching this video. I have contemplated a lot about the meaning of the show from its vibrant characters to its colorful messages. I've done my research and even read all of the fan translated book of Ichigo Dome to get a better grasp at the meaning of this show. Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso is inspired by this book and you'll see why. When Watchery gets a bunch of books from the library for Kaori to read, there is only one that stands out. The book is called Ichigo Dome by Mita Masahiro that Kosei has apparently read based on the checkout names under it. If you thought Your Line April had a sad ending, then you wouldn't want to read Ichigo Dome's ending. The book is about a boy named Ryoji, who also loves playing the piano, and a girl named Naomi, who is even more visibly sick than Kaori. One of the most pivotal scenes in the show is Kaori quoting lines from the book and knowingly playing the role as Naomi. She does so by telling Kosei how she is just like the book, and how weird of a person he is, and then asking the most haunting and random question of the entire series. When Kaori asked Kosei this question, it was the same question that is asked in the book. Ryoshi doesn't say anything back to Naomi, and Kosei reacted the exact same way, standing there without a word. Kosei's worst fears were realized. His questions were answered about her condition. It was his worst tragedy being replayed again. He knows the reference and knows she's not going to be okay. The next time Kosei sees her, Kaori quotes the book again saying, I thought you wouldn't come see me anymore. This is the last time Kaori plays the part of Naomi because after this visit, Kosei decides to try to repay her back. Kosei did not want to play the role of Ryochi anymore. He did not want to play Ravel. Ryochi plays Pavan for her dead princess in the book, which explains Kosei's negative reaction to hearing it. And instead, he plays Sleeping Beauty by Tchaikovsky for her. This is a song that represents a happy ending and a different take of what Kosei wanted her story to end like, not in tragedy, but in hope and in bliss. Kosei plays a song with Nagi to try to motivate Kaori to keep living. He tells her that he will never play Ravel, and tells her that she doesn't need to be the heroine of the novel. He wants a happy ending, and wants her to keep fighting and trying to live, which makes the scene so much more impactful than it was before. The Phantom of the Opera. Here's something I found that no one really mentions. This girl, Nagi, keeps referencing herself as a phantom, and even says she is the phantom in the opera house. If you don't know the story of the phantom in the opera house, I'll explain it briefly. There's this girl named Christine, who is a singer and performs in the opera house. The phantom is a simp and is willing to do anything for Christine because of his love for her. So much so, the Phantom sabotages someone with a lead role so that Christine can get the main role in the opera house. Nagi believes she is the ugly Phantom and wants her brother to have the main role since he is always losing to Arima. She tries to take out Kosei by sabotaging him. From trying to viciously damage his fingers with the piano failboard to putting him down every chance she could get, but in the end she eventually accepts Kosei as her mentor and grows more fond of him. Her perspective changes little by little, until it changes completely after her performance with Kosei. And this shows that she is not the phantom she thought she was, but is actually Christine, the girl who debuted in the opera house. The Blue-Eyed Cat This cat represents Kaori. From the very first minute of the show, you see Kaori following a blue-eyed cat everywhere in different frames. And at the very end of the intro, she even says a cute meow while holding a sweet to the cat. As well, the last time you see this cat is in the final moments of the show after a year has passed. As the train passes, the cat disappears and the cherry blossoms fly away to the sky, which shows that she'll no longer be there with them. The cherry blossoms come and go very quickly, only lasting for about two weeks in real time, which also represents how Kaori wasn't in Kosei's life for very long, but will still leave a huge impact to Kosei for the rest of his life. The Yellow-Eyed Cat you only see this cat in the first 13 episodes of the show. This cat represents Kosei being a coward, basically. His fear and his doubt. This cat asks the questions that Kosei is deeply troubled by. Questions that Kosei can't answer. When Kosei finally overcomes his fear and answers those questions, the cat never returns. He has new ambition and a new reason to keep playing the piano and improving himself. Another thing the cat could possibly symbolize is also Kosei's cat named Chelsea. 
Just, just hear me out for a sec. You never see Chelsea's eyes in the anime, but when his mother takes and abandons him, it definitely tears him up. Not just the fact that she's probably gone forever, probably dead on the street somewhere, but the fact that he didn't do anything to stop his mother, a time where he felt helpless and was too fearful to even say a word. So the cat that he has therapy with is probably his old cat named Chelsea. The cat that got run overed. Again, this symbolizes Kaori and how Kose can't save her. The realization hits like a pack of bricks because he gives up on the piano and feels powerless to help her. Because playing only reminds him of the things he's lost. The blood on Kose's hands. After the veterinarians tell him there was nothing they could do, there's no blood on his hands, but he still tries to wash it off. The last time you see the stained hands is when he's about to perform on the day of Kaori surgery. The blood could represent that he feels guilt for something like how sin is used as blood in the Bible. He feels that even though it's not his fault, it's still his fault for being unable to save her. The same feeling he felt for his mother that he tried to save with his piano. It's crazy, but that's how he thinks, and that's how people think. The Dusty Piano Kose is like the lost child in this episode. He clings to Kaori for help. The show constantly alludes to this and even shows it in the final episode, when they even show Kaori comforting his younger self. This show is a story of tragedy, but it's also a story of hope and growth. Kose starts off as a weak protagonist. All of his life he's been called worthless by his mother, a human metronome, even a puppet. As a child, he even said he didn't even think he had a soul. He starts to believe it and dwells on it. It's not until he screws up at a competition when he realizes he's human and that expressing emotion is not a bad thing. Playing the keys like a robot is what Kose was taught how to play and even taught how to live. He sees life in monotone for that reason. Kose is like his piano that was buried in the dust, piled up with clutter, all the negative things in his life holding him down. It's not until Kaori symbolically wipes off the dust and clears the clutter that shows that things are about to change. And when Kosei finally begins to change and want to improve, he becomes better than he ever was.